Hey guys, welcome to JMoff Pickup. This is going to be a part two of my background, my upbringing, all that stuff. I got a lot of positive feedback. Uh, a lot of people reached out to me directly and were like, dude, I didn't know you were a fucking nerd, all this shit. And it's cool because when I meet smart girls, like I can like talk about like endless intellectual topics. I have like this go-to thing if I meet a really smart girl. This actually happened last weekend with like, this med student. And I'll just like start rattling off all this shit about like evolutionary psychology and artificial intelligence, blah blah blah. And then I'm like, it's cool because most smart people I like meet are either physically unattractive and or socially awkward. And she's like, oh my god, I know. So you like have this like special bond. It's like done deal at that point. Um, so to expand on some of the topics, uh, my work history before I started uh, doing affiliate marketing, I worked out of college. So I did the two bachelor's degrees in philosophy and computer science, the two master's degrees in human computer interaction and philosophy of cognitive science. And then I took a job working for Lockheed Martin. And I did that for about five years. Um, my job was if there was a nuclear, biological, or chemical missile attack on the United States or our allies, how do we optimize the speed of response time and the accuracy of response time? So I had a security clearance. I worked on like some pretty hardcore shit, won some top awards, made some like really key improvements that could actually, not even like exaggerating, could make or break um, us defending against uh, North Korea or Iran. So, I mean, you know, that's a pretty important job. Um, then I moved on to lead teams for IBM, and that was for two years, mostly work from home. And that's why I started getting really into game. So it was nice because I was working from home, so I could like I could get usually all the work done in like four hours, but they were paying me for about forty hours. Um, then I moved on to work for Sony, PlayStation, and Hewlett Packard. But those were those were like very brief jobs. Those were like a month or two. I haven't, I haven't had like a real job since like early 2013. It's almost five years now. And I, I mean, I do the affiliate marketing stuff now, but I was just doing, like in 2013, I was running like a big pickup mansion. I'm gonna try to like learn more like video editing shit so I can like, I'll try to show you guys a picture of the pickup mansion I was running. Um, yeah, it's like me, like in Playboy, I have a nice picture of, like of our backyard with like me and Playboy pajama pants sitting on a golden horse. And there's like, we had like a waterfall like in this hotel sized pool like that was all in our backyard. Um, and it had like a wall of flame over it. There was like a grotto, tennis court, miniature golf course. All that was like part of our, our land. And the students were basically funding the mansion. And then I had a bunch of uh, money left over. So I was just like partying and that's why I was like refining a lot of my game. And then just running random boot camps and stuff like that until I got into you know, here and there, doing some other random jobs or whatever, but I didn't really, I haven't really had to, have had to work very hard since early 2013. Um, and now I do the affiliate marketing stuff, you know, that, that pays off tenfold the amount of time you put in, so. And I'll make a video on how you can crush it in affiliate marketing. I'm not gonna give away, like, there's a lot of, like, proprietary secrets that like just the really big top dogs know and I learned those. I'm not gonna fucking give that shit away. Same thing, like I'm not gonna put out on YouTube like all my most killer stuff in game. Like the stuff I put on my channel is pretty fucking killer but it goes like way deeper down the rabbit hole in my product. And like, again, yeah, that's not a plug, it's just a fucking, this is how it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna like, I already just put out a full infield pull. Um, you know, so that's that's pretty fucking generous. I don't think any other coach has done that on YouTube. All right, so anyways, with a breakdown. Um, so what else? Oh, okay. So like my childhood consisted of like a lot of like nerdiness, a lot of shyness, but also consisted of like relentless, like nonstop verbal abuse. So I think like the way I ended up getting super into game is I was just like totally stripped of validation and like a sense of worth and stuff like that by my mother. Um, she's like a really nice person and all this shit. She's, it's, it's really ironic because she's like very, mo she's very moral. She doesn't like fuck anyone over. She doesn't drink. She never tried drugs. Like, you know, she waited till marriage to have sex. Like on paper, she's like awesome. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like blast my mother here on YouTube, but you know, I, I think her her father like parented her like very, you know, just always coming down on her, always being negative, always yelling, always insulting, and she kind of like passed that along to me. I was the first child that like lessened with the my other three siblings. So I got like the, the brunt of it. I was actually like suicidal in high school where I had to like go into the guidance counselor and like check in and like tell them I wasn't gonna kill myself. 
it was like pretty hardcore. Dude, I didn't have the financial means to move out, and it was just like relentless verbal abuse. Like you're never gonna be anything. You're always gonna be worthless. And that like even continued in college. Like I moved out when I was 17, but you know I, I finished my two master's degrees in half the time. They didn't, they they weren't impressed. Um, doing all this crazy shit in nuclear missile defense, we're not impressed. You know, they focus on things like, oh, well, you don't go to church anymore, or like, oh, you don't vote. And I'll go into my rationale for those things um, in other videos. But, you know, it's, it's almost like they've never, every, every like awesome thing I've done or when I started making tons of money in affiliate marketing, they just always go to like the worst case scenario or they always go to, you know, when I took the IBM job, they're like, oh, you were in a union at, at Lockheed. I was making like 85 grand at Lockheed after five years and moved up from like 64K to 85. And IBM offered me like 120 to work from home, but it was like contract work. And she's like, oh, you were in a union at Lockheed Martin and you had stable benefits and all that stuff. Whatever. I just stopped caring about their approval a long time ago. Um, but that I probably still have like some deep seated shit there from childhood. Couple that with like a hyper analytical mind. And here we have like, you know, cause fucking a chick is external validation. So I think that's, I'm probably still caught up in that, or definitely still caught up in that to some degree. But like each time I bang a chick, I'm like, yeah. And like all the guys in the forums like root me out and shit, you know, so that's probably like unhealthy to some degree, but it's cool in a way because it allowed me to innovate and optimize all this shit. Um, let me think what else. Oh, some people were like asking about like, um, in the early days, like how was game like for me and all that stuff. I talk about, I don't know if this is another video or forum post, but basically like I pick up stuff really fast. So like when I learned poker, I was implementing a lot of advanced strategies in my first tournament. When I learned mystery method, on my first night out ever doing mystery method, I was doing all his advanced shit from his books. Like I, I was doing the routines, I was doing the negs, I was doing pawning where you take like a less hot girl and like use her to like get more attraction this from a hotter girl. I was doing um, the pre-selection stuff, like take away, like I was doing everything. And I'll, I'll post, I have a field report for my first time ever doing Mystery Method. I'll, I'll post the link down here in this description so you guys can read that. This will give you like a window into like how fast I was, I was leveling up to this stuff. Like I, I write down in full detail, it's kind of a long field report, but I write down in full detail everything that happened that night. And then everything I had questions about. And I wrote, when I was becoming intermediate to advanced, I wrote a lot of field reports too. Mostly for myself, I didn't give a shit about like these fucking random kids analyzing this stuff. But I wanted to look at where were my sets breaking down, where were my interactions breaking down, where were the areas I can improve, and that's the mindset I've had the whole way through. Where are the weak points? How, you know, who are the people that I can meet in my life that have stronger game in these areas, and how can I adapt accordingly so that I can bolster my game up and so that's like on par with, with theirs, right? So I just want to constantly be evolving the, the machine and, and optimizing the machine. Now I was doing like 100 lays on average for like a few years. And this past year I made some key optimizations like dates straight to the house, a little bit longer sets in night game with makeouts, increased like my pull uh, closing rate. Um, the wine dates to the house, it's just like fucking dynamite in a barrel, whatever the fucking term is. It's insane. If you, if you still haven't watched that video yet, go watch it. It's 10 minutes. Setting updates straight to the house. I, I have all these guys, and like, I, I haven't gotten laid in months or years, and I, I'm getting laid like right after watching this video. It's like, there you go. Like, And these other companies are putting out like 100 videos, and you watch them all, and you're like, I have no fucking clue what to do, right? It's very simple to just give you guys actionable steps that you can fucking copy. I mean, the problem is for those other companies that it fixes the problem, and then you don't need them anymore. Um, what else? Um... But yeah, you can read through that field report and, and I'm literally like, like items to, to work on, like questions I have, like, and I go and solve them. It's not just like, I go out, I try a bunch of shit, it works or doesn't work, and then I go and try a bunch of shit, works or doesn't work. The same thing with like the gym, like I was telling Sonny Arvado, I used to just go to the gym, lift a certain weight, I wouldn't track the amount, the, the amount I was lifting, and then I'd go and lift that weight the same week, that I, and then you're not like progressing. Now we're like, like one of my lifts today went up like 50% from the weight we used last week. Like we're like really, really pushing me. And just keep, and that's how you fucking improve. This is iteratively adding on and adding on and adding on. So, but no, like in terms of like when I first started off, I was fucking like really terrified to approach. Like 
that approach anxiety stuff, and I still feel it even at almost 800 lays, you just gotta fucking ignore it. Like, I've talked, watched my approach anxiety video, I explained the evolutionary roots of why it's there, but you just gotta ignore it. Like, don't pay attention to it. But I, I would be like terrified. Like, I'd be like, I would take like the fucking subway in Philadelphia or like a cab or whatever, and I'd be like memorizing my openers, and I'd be like fucking terrified, right? And I'm like, you know, I don't want to get blown out, I don't want to get rejected, and, but over time you just develop a thick skin for this stuff, like, you can't expect every girl to like you, that's not the case for anyone, um, you can't expect every set to go well, it's the same thing in sales, like, the common state of affairs is most people are going to, like, not be interested, that, that doesn't mean you can't make shitloads of money in sales, I, I told you guys I'm going to make another video how I was the top salesman in the sales company, lots of the people would slam the door in my face, lots of people would you know, give me a hard time or whatever. Who fucking cares? Like, I, there was days I made like thousands and thousands of dollars and I, I didn't have to work that hard. But none of that shit rattled me because I'm used to like fucking blows from the club and game, right? So like, stop, like get rid of the expectation. I learned this over time, but in the beginning when you're like starting to get in all this or even when you're like a newbie intermediate, you, you take all this shit so personally. Like there's just a percentage of girls that are gonna like you for whatever reason they might just be in a bad mood, they might actually have a boyfriend and they're not lying to you, you might be too short for them, you might not be their type, whatever it may be. It doesn't fucking matter, who cares? Like, my old business partner used to be like, on boot camps, he'd, he'd be like, if a girl rejects me, there's a hotter girl right around the corner that's gonna suck my dick tonight. So like one of the old school um, approach, like forcers that you can do to yourself, this is what I used to do when I was like terrified of approaching the meeting. Um, I think Mystery came up with this. You, some of you guys probably don't even have two hundred dollars. You can like short, just shorten the scale on this if if you don't have two hundred dollars. Withdraw two hundred dollars cash. Give it to your wing. Of course, it's got to be someone you can trust. And for each approach you do, and it can't be some fucking half-ass thing like, oh hey, and then like that counts as an approach. It's got to be like a legitimate, good attempt at approaching the girl. Each time you get twenty bucks back. So. If you want to be a pussy, you want to be scared, you want to avoid these opportunities to go in, you lose 200 bucks. You want to be half a pussy, you lose 100 bucks. And if you do that every time you go out, it's going to force you to approach, right? So that, that's one technique you can do, because um, you're not going to want to just keep losing all this money. And like, trust me, over time you start to realize, like there's been a bunch of time, like, okay, here, here's a little anecdotal story. I was in CVS once, pharmacy, for those of you that don't know, it's like a fucking little mini supermarket or whatever. And I saw this chick, and like sometimes you can just tell that a chick's really hot, but she's like dressed down. She's wearing like a winter coat. She had like no makeup on, but I could tell just like the way she was carrying herself. And like, I could just tell like, if she was done up, she would be really hot. And I like saw her in the store and like, I was like, ah, fuck. Like if only I had met her at a bar or a club, like I'd know exactly what to do. I'd have a couple of drinks in me. I'd be like fucking on top of that. I'd pull this chick. She'd be done up, she'd look really hot and stuff. And I was like, fuck though, like I'm too scared, like because there were people around, I'm like, I don't want anyone to hear. And then like, you know, I started walking around the store and then we like kind of like passed each other and we made eye contact and I was like, oh, and I didn't say anything. And I saw she got in line for the pharmacy and I needed to get a prescription as well. I went behind her in the pharmacy line and I was like, oh, fuck, fuck. And this was at like, I was probably like 300 something place. It's like stupid, right? I mean, in the club, I'm like, on, and, it, and this has gotten way better since then. Like now I can dig in approach like a champion when I need to. But I still had like, this complex, like, oh, and, you know, if only I had a couple drinks or if only I had fucking met this chick at a club, like it would be game over. So, but I've, I've, I've like passed up on these before and then you just fucking beat yourself up for like days because you're like, fuck. Because your odds are literally 0%. If you don't talk to that girl, they're 0%. And, if you talk to her, they're greater than zero percent. And if you're a cool dude, you know, like I already fucked like 300 chicks, like I didn't doubt that I was a cool dude. I just, it was just easier, and I'm just being honest here, it was just easier socially to be like, all right, well I'll just fucking get the next one and I won't have to let these people in line like turn and look at me like when I'm opening or, or have the girl brush me off and like feel bad myself, about myself or whatever. And I'm like, wait a second, fuck that. Because I don't want to go home and be like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like why didn't I, why didn't I talk to her? I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this. And I said in my tactical game breakdown video, make a hard rule that when you see a girl above your threshold of attractiveness for that daytime approach, boom, go straight in, right? So, 
um, I forced myself to do it. And I was like, yo, and I, and I came in a little bit weak too. Like, I don't usually go interact, but I, I was like, still kind of scared. <laughs> Let's be honest. And I was like, um, what did I say? I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? I just moved here. You know, I, a lot of times I open up with like, oh, I'm gonna be DJing at some of these clubs. And I'm like, do you ever go out? And she's like, no, I'm not really in the nightlife. Um, I was like, shit. I'm like, what do you do for a living? And she's like, oh, I'm an IT recruiter, like information technology recruiter. And I have a degree in computer science, so I was like, oh, like, I might be looking for a new job out here, I'm new to the area, um, could I hit you up? And she's like, yeah, and she's like, here's my business, e or, here's my business, my work email. And then in my mind, I'm like, fuck, like, you fucking, like, pussy, what the fuck are you doing? Because now it's, like, framed as, like, oh, like, help me for the job opportunity when actually I was attracted to her. And I get her, like, her, her full name was in her email. We chit-chat a little bit. I leave, I Google her name. And she's like a fucking like top end model, and there's like these these pictures of her. She's like a ten, like she looked, she had like sweats and like fucking <clears throat> winter coat, and uh, you know no makeup and her hair. It, it, you know she was just obviously like not at all put together, but I could just you know, sometimes you can just tell with the really hot ones that they that they would be really hot if they were done up, and this chick's like close to a ten. She's wearing like pasties and shit, like laying in like flower beds and all this shit. I'm like holy fuck. So then I emailed her, and I was like, hey, like, it's John from CVS. Um, yeah, it'd be cool if you could let me know about the jobs and stuff. Uh, but I actually, like, talked to you because I thought you were, like, like really attractive. And she replied, like, yeah, I know, haha. -ha. Um, let's get coffee this week. And then we met up, and then we, like, made out, but I didn't bang her, and then we met up again. She had, she was like connected in the city and shit too. We met up again and like hung out with her and her like bartender friends at this one bar and then went home and banged her. You know, there's so many like situations, I could just tell like a million stories like this where like, and look at, and look back to like where I wanted to approach. I was just like, fuck, fuck, you know, like even at 300 something like, cause that, that feeling, that approach anxiety thing is like hardwired in, into our brains, right? It's like our bodies were built on like these evolutionary antiquated circuitry like for better or worse even if they're the circuitry is irrelevant in the modern time that's still how how we are built so you have to just be aware of that and fucking be a man and and, and you know and i've had enough of these like hesit hesitant situations mostly through like mostly in daytime interactions because at nighttime like i've just done it so many times i'm just like it's fine it's fine you know i just go straight in but i don't hesitate anymore like i just fucking go straight in and you just have to like man up um, and just fucking do it. Like no hemming and hawing, like debating, should I do it? Just make a hard rule that you're always gonna do it, okay? So yeah, like I'm just going, I'm going to depth on this approaching topic because it's, it's like a really big, um, what's the fucking term? It's like a non, like approaching, it becomes like, like the interaction becomes like a non-starter because you're so terrified to approach. So do the fucking $200 thing, do the, uh, whatever kind of, you're gonna give up something else to your friend if you don't have money, like your Xbox or whatever the fuck, if you don't approach these 10 dudes, or <laughs> 10 chicks. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was about to like go into my next thought. I was, I was gonna say this dude that took my boot camp, um, he like had never approached a girl in his life. This, this is like extreme, an extreme example. And I made rules like, we're doing 10 approaches tonight and we can't go home until, we, until we're done. And this was in Vegas, it was like four years ago. 9 a.m., like, cause there's chicks in these casinos and shit late night. 9 a.m. comes around and he's at like eight approaches. I'm like, we're not fucking going home, man. Like, we're, we're gonna fuck, we're gonna, like if we pulled it on later, I'm like, I told you we're doing 10, we're fucking doing 10. And, and this dude was like, he was trembling on the approach. He was physically trembling, he was sweating. I'm like, you gotta fucking get past this. You gotta man up. And most coaches would just be like, all right, we'll get him next time, Tiger, or something. No, like, you know, not to go into a whole aside, but like men used to be like initiated in the fucking wild. Like they'd have to fucking hunt animals and shit. Like we're not, this is like far <laughs> easier to go up and talk to a stranger than to fucking hunt down like an animal that could kill you. You know, talk about pussification of men in our modern time. And he, he got it, I think. I don't know, but close to like lunchtime or whatever. And then he was like a new man the next day. 
like after we fucking slept and shit, that when we met up again, he was just like, dude, like, I feel liberated. He's like, I did it. I'm like, yeah. And then, you know, he didn't start crushing it, but he was like able to approach his stuff and, and he was like a lot calmer. Um, and then we moved on from there. We, we got him some skills, like he ended up getting a make out. He didn't, he didn't have any poles and stuff. With the, with the really hard cases, it's not a fucking magic trick where I teach them all these other game tactics. Like, I, I, I'll say like, almost all my students take my bootcamp or my product, as long as they're not an extreme hard case, level up really fast. Like, almost all of them. But, you know, there's certain guys that they have more work to do on themselves. Like, I was co-teaching a, a program with Todd in Washington, D.C. with, with uh, Todd, Todd V. Dating, Todd Valentine back in uh, 2012 and we had a 50 year old data analyst that was mostly bald and he's like I have not really interacted with women my whole life and he was a virgin and uh, he's more like have you talked with many people at all he's like I haven't really interacted with many men either he was awkward as fuck um, you know and he was getting really frustrated I, I pulled like a, a cheerleader from like one of the from the professional uh, football team and like went and banged her at the hotel, like super hot stunner. Banged her at the hotel I was staying at and then brought her out on the program. And she's like hanging out with us and stuff. And he like didn't even know how to behave around her. And it's just tough. I mean, he was 50. Like the, the chicks, you know, he was almost bald. Like the chicks just didn't want to talk to him. Even regard, just based on how he looked, even regardless of his awkwardness and stuff. And you know, he's got a lot of work to do on him. So it's, the shit isn't magic. I would actually recommend a guy like that to just start lifting a lot of weights. You know, he had like that like halfway ball chick going on where it looked like shit. He, his best bet is to fucking go lift a lot of weights, get a tan, make a lot more money, fucking shave that shit, get a bunch of social connections, put himself into like a, these extreme shock scenarios where he just has to fucking man up in terms of like holding a conversation and stuff like that. And, um, you know, probably like throw some money around and shit, like at tables and stuff. Like, a lot of these other companies are like, everyone has an equal chance. No, that guy does not have an equal chance against like the average young man in a club. He just fucking doesn't. So you have to like adapt, okay? Um, yeah, there's not really too much more to say about approaching. So like, keep in mind, I came from a really shy place, really awkward place. I have social anxiety disorder, I have general anxiety disorder. <laughs> there's another girl fucking waiting outside my house, by the way. Like a half an hour, this happens like every video. Um, For those of you that have watched my Dates to the House video. <laughs> wow. I think that's the first time this has happened. I've been using the Bring Pepper Spray for that worried line for like probably about a year now. Almost a year. This chick's like, I'll see you soon when you're off your because I'm seeing someone meeting again. I'll see you soon. Um, by the way, I, I brought the pepper spray. So that's nice. I've actually never been pepper sprayed. I don't, I don't anticipate that happening tonight, but it's still funny. All right, I was going to fucking land parties. I'm not sure if you guys know what the fuck that is. <clears throat> it's basically like, it was like before high-speed internet, like everyone brings their fucking computer. Like you literally like put it in your car, <laughs> it's like your mom's car. She drops you off for like the night, like some fucking super nerdy dude's uh, basement. There's like 10 of you and you're all like, networked through like <laughs> Ethernet cable and shit and you're drinking Mountain Dew and eating pizza playing like fucking Quake 2 like all this other fucking shit people are like trading files <clears throat> like really pathetic guys are like you know it's the type of guys that aren't showering and stuff so they smell like shit <laughs> I was doing this like imagine I, I, I really wish you could just like like watch a day in my life at this point it's like Taking the bus to school, playing violin in the orchestra, taking like eight advanced placement classes, playing wireless chess. This is before um, there was like internet connectivity on, on phones, like smartphones. And I was playing like, there were these devices that could like communicate with each other within like a hundred feet. And I'd, I'd play like my, my one friend, he did a PhD in quantum physics now. Or, 
that you know before he's living on like a boat now he's like gone he, he's like crazy not not actually crazy but you know he's one of those people that's like way too smart he's like a robot and we <laughs> we would play we'd be like in AP class like playing uh, wireless chess against each other before what wireless technology was available on phones um, I was sitting with like two guys at lunch like clearly like the misfits you know like the nerdiest guys sneaking out of the lunchroom like <laughs> it's like early fucking Machiavellian tactics and manipulation, like convincing these lunch ladies that we somehow needed to leave the lunch. We weren't supposed to leave the lunchroom. We would go and day trade the stocks, and I put like Quake Two on like the the server for like our AP computer science class, and the teacher didn't know, and we were all playing Quake Two during, you know, lots of really fucking nerdy stuff. Um, <laughs> and I, then I would go home and like play video games and shit, like. There was no fucking pussy ever. <laughs> like, I wish I could fucking redo high school because a lot of there was like fucking lots of hot chicks in my high school. You know, chicks at this time like thongs hanging out of like yoga pants were like in style. So you had, like all these chicks, with fucking like awesome rocking tits, with like their midsection exposed, and belly button ring, like spandex pants on, with like their thong hanging out. You know, and basically it was just like a monopoly for like the, the jocks and like the, whatever, the, the cool kids, you know, at the time. So, yeah, like I, <laughs> I literally finished high school without even having kissed a chick. Um, so like, for those of you that are like, you know, you think there's no hope or whatever, like I probably don't seem shy at all now because I'm not. I probably don't seem lacking confidence now because I don't. Um, you can fucking change all this. And like, I'm not even, like, I told you guys to stop drinking. Like, I'm not even drinking anymore, like, making this video. You probably see, like, I'm a little bit different than when I was doing these long diatribes, plowing through a bottle of liquor, like the Tyler video. <laughs> making a lot more jokes, saying a lot more crazy stuff. But I've just, like, gotten past all that. Like, I don't know. I mean, like I said, moving at my parents' house. Just start, like, just start coming out of your shell. Like, start. Start like being like the the life of the party. Start be, and not like RSD life of the party where you're like Rah! like <laughs> you know like trying to fake all this shit. When you're in groups of people, don't be the person that's just kind of like sitting there observing passively. Be the person that fucking chimes in, like fucking cracks jokes, <clears throat> leads the conversation. Like the the person that people like want to be around, right? The person. But that's what started happening in college. Was like. I'm making jokes, like I'm, I'm being outgoing now. I came out of my introverted shell. I stopped playing video games. You know, and I still have that that nerdy side. Like that's that's me deep down. But you can like fix the social part, right? Like I still know a fuckload about a lot of nerdy shit, and I, I always like joke with girls. I'm like a closet nerd now. And a lot of like my really hot fuck buddies are like, I really like it. I can still see the nerdy side in you and all this stuff. Like. You know, because not many fucking nerdy dudes like become alpha. It's like a for the chicks that I like smart dudes. It's like a win-win because it they like smart dudes, but they don't want they don't want a pussy guy. Um, but yeah, like that was about as extreme as it gets with all that shit that I just listed. Um, and I, I've said this in another video, but I, the way I got into mystery method was I won a poker tournament. I took a bunch of my friends to the bar, bought everyone drinks, and I was like trying to talk to girls in a great mood, and I was just getting destroyed. And I came home with my best friend at the time, and I was like, dude, like there has to be a better way. We have to fucking figure this out. And the quantum physics dude is the one that found out about the book, The Game and Mystery Method. <clears throat> he tried to get me to read it for like two years. This was before the, the poker night where I got blown up. He tried to get me to read it for like two years before this, and I thought it was a scam. And for those of you, like, I know lots of people lurk in this channel and stuff, like people from, from Slut Hate, which used to be P-Way Hate, like the, the fucking pick up hate groups and stuff, where you, you guys think game is just all a bunch of bullshit and all that, it's not, like, I can assure you it's not, like, I my, myself have fucking destroyed, I've gotten tons of people really good at this, um, but on the surface, yes, it sounds like a scam, and there are tons of people in the niche, and I, I've exposed some of them, and I'm going to expose a lot more, that are just ripping people off from, for money. Like RST has 30 products, they don't want to fix the solution. There's a bunch of internet marketers that have infiltrated the space and put out product. I'm not gonna fucking blast them because 
I'm like in certain circles now where they, where they do other internet marketing stuff and it's it to be bad politics. But there are a lot of products in here that have just massively scammed the people that are trying to get better with women. Massively, massively scammed. And they, they like farm their content out to India. The content is like complete BS. I've had the originators of the systems admit it to my face. And so yes, slut hate, PUA hate guys, the Reddit haters, like the looks money status, people that think that it's all looks money status and not any game. I see where you're coming from, but you're completely wrong. I'm acknowledging there's tons of scammers in the industry, yes. I'm acknowledging on the surface it all sounds like a bunch of bullshit, yes. Um, but it's not. Like, yes, looks money status do matter and they do give you advantage. But there are certain tactics. If you watch my channel, you're seeing there's certain tactical things that I'm doing. There's certain structural things I'm doing to grease the wheels and, and guide things all the way to having sex. That's it's indisputable. You know, every day I get comments like, oh, like, it's just because you're tall or like, you know, other, some other stupid shit. Um, <clears throat> what the fuck was my point? Uh, oh yeah, so, so I, was, I was refusing for like two years. I'm like, dude, are you fucking kidding? Like, that's obviously a bunch of scam shit. How, how could I read a book and all of a sudden start crushing with the girls? You know, and it was so far outside of what I, what I thought could be true. But after that night where I got to strike the bar, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to read the book. And for those of you that read the book The Game, it's like a captivating tale and all this shit that doesn't get into too much theory or too much tactical action things you can do. The Mystery Method does extremely well for those of you that haven't been through that. Eric von Markovic, Mystery, who topped off in the low 300 count at age like 50, which is, you know, it's respectable. Um, I, I, I really wish he would fucking collaborate with me because it, there's a lot we could fucking put together. He, he had a lot of really, really, really great concepts, but his book is just like a tactical manual. And, and now I've come to realize a bunch of it is wrong, but a bunch of it is really spot on. And I'll make a video about that. That's, that's kind of, the, that's where things changed. And then I took his foundation. I talked to all the top guys I could find. I was part of a group called uh, topbeasts.com. Because I started rising as a star in RC Nation in 2012, 2013. And these guys went out and found who they thought were the best uh, people posting on RC Nation and, uh, and in other forums that could back up stuff like who was like showing pictures with the girls like who was showing like field, extensive field reports who was getting vouched for by other people and they collected what they believed to be the top 30 pickup artists in the world back in 2012 and made a forum called top beasts it was like the modern version of like mysteries lounge from back in the day and i was invited to that and i knew a bunch of the guys that were in there like that turned out to be my friends and, and why did those people had why had those people become my friends and before that we all got added to this group because i was hunting out these top guys vacuuming up all the knowledge I could and then optimizing my game as a result and what I did was I went through every one of those top 30 guys field report and thread posts across all their forums I, I did all this research I befriended all of them or tried to I think a couple of them were fucking assholes <laughs> and then I with my again hyper analytical brain I analyzed what is the common overlap between all these guys that are really successful and it overlapped a lot of key areas, and that formed the basis for my method even today. And I integrated what I knew from Mystery Method into this as well. I integrated what I knew from like master natural players, like my uncle. Um, and I just kept hunting out the best guy. And, and ever since then, I've just constantly scanned it for weak spots. I've constantly tried to meet the new guys that are like crushing in certain areas that are better than me, like Alex Vilenchik, uh last year with like his online stuff and his texting. I was like, finally another guy that's better than me, even. At, 600 something whatever and I picked his brain and he's helped me level up a lot I've helped him with his night game stuff and this is how it just keeps going and I innovate on my own a lot of times too I'm like here's a problem that needs to be solved or here's an area that like is not optimized and I will try a bunch of shit and that's that's how I came up with the line thing um, and I, I've came up with a lot of this stuff a lot of these lines that are circling around the community I originated a lot of them um, and other guys innovate too not many you know again like those guys I talk about in the how should you learn pickup group those guys are innovating those guys are adding real value to the community and then you have people that are like detracting value from the community putting out fluff bullshit contradictory incorrect concept videos so that's how my method was formed and now it is fucking rock solid you know like I was able to do 100 in less than five months in early 2017 so like the rate keeps increasing okay all right <clears throat> I think that's good for now. I might make a part three. Keep putting in your questions here. Um, there's a chick that's waiting for like 45 minutes. So I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, thanks.